And what if there were vendors who said, take all 30? Then folks, you wouldn't need any money to run your business. So what does it mean when you see a higher current liability in a balance sheet? When are vendors willing to give you more and more credit? When your credibility is great? When they respect you a lot? When your reputation is very, very good? So who has higher current liabilities in a balance sheet? The better the organization, the greater the amount of current liabilities. So what does it mean when you see high current liabilities in a balance sheet? A very, very good organization? <laughs> I am now pointing out a trap to you folks. The greater your credibility, the better the reputation you enjoy, the more the chances are vendors are willing to give you more credit. But folks, as the number on the left hand side becomes higher and higher, how much is healthy current ratio? 2 is to 1. As this number starts inching towards 30, you are headed towards 1 is to 1 and you might soon even have a negative working capital. So folks, I am pointing out this trap to you. A company with a bad current ratio is not necessarily a bad company. It is an entrapped company where somebody didn't understand the principles of finance management. Folks, when people are willing to give you credit on a platter, you need the maturity to say, gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm honored, but I don't want it because if I take it, I will get into this trap. Two minutes, 25 seconds. Okay, let me take you a little further. Okay, so let me illustrate what I mean. Folks, pick up four balance sheets. <laughs> I love that time management, so I don't want to disrespect it in any way. I'll stop on dot, maybe mid-sentence. Uh, folks, what is the net working capital of the first company? 45, second one? Third, fourth. How much is the current ratio of the first company? Second, third, fourth. How much is good current ratio? How much is better current ratio? Which is the best organization of the four? Which is the first one? Which is the worst one? This is the answer expected of you based on the input that I have given you 10 minutes back. But this is the answer you're giving me on the basis of quantitative data given to you. If I give you a, some qualitative data now, let's say you are told the first guy with such an impressive ratio is actually a third grade manufacturer. His product is inferior, his reputation is bad, his business ethics are not good. Now, when this person goes to sell his products, nobody is willing to buy. People say, you know, I, I, if I want to buy, I'll buy from, if he's a, let's say, a truck manufacturer, people say, if I want to buy, I'll buy from Tata's. Now, nobody buys from him, so he starts telling people that, but Tata's asked for cash payment. You know, take it from me, pay me next month. People are still not willing to buy. Then he says, pay me two months later. Three months later, four months, in his desperation to lure customers, the only way he can do that is by giving longer and longer periods of credit. What kind of debtors will he have? Imagine these are debtors and creditors. Very high. When this person goes to buy for his own consumption, nobody is willing to entertain. They say, you've got such a bad reputation. You don't pay on time. If you wish to buy, pay cash. Otherwise, we're not interested in selling. What kind of creditors will he have? Low. Debtors, high. Ratio, excellent. What kind of an organization is this? Now imagine this is Tata Motors. If they go to sell, if they say one month credit, people buy. If they say cash, people still buy. What kind of debtors will you have? And when they go to buy for their own consumption, there's a line of vendors. Everybody wants to be a vendor to them. And when all vendors are qualitatively at par, the only way one vendor can make himself more attractive than the other is by saying, this fellow says 30 days, I can wait for 60 days. Next fellow says I can wait for 90 days. Again, organizations tend to buy from vendors who give you the longest period of credit without compromising on quality. What kind of creditors will you have? High. Debtors? Low. What kind of an organization is this? Excellent. I ask you, who will you back? Who will you support? Where will you invest your money? Folks, will you invest your money with a third grade organization with a top grade ratio? Or will you invest your money with a top grade organization with a third grade ratio? Who will you support? <clears throat> Folks, I will still support the first organization. Why? I am now telling you there is a sanctity to these ratios. The first organization's adverse conditions pushed him into a good ratio. What is good about him? Who's going to come knocking on his doors asking for money? Five. And how many doors can he go knocking on? 
50, he will survive. I am telling you, let this be Tata Motors, let this be LNT, let this be the best organization in the world. But if you let this happen, what's the problem with the last organization? Folks, you have to remember a balance sheet has this tendency always to balance. And if I complete the balance sheet and if the total happens to be 100, you appreciate if the long current liabilities are 50, then long term sources will be 50. And if the current liabilities are 5, then long term users will be 95. Do you recognize this as C type of a company? I am trying to tell you whenever you have access to more short term money than can be absorbed into short term avenues. It is natural this money will go up and then you will become guilty of one of the biggest crimes of bad finance management and that is to have used short term money for long term purposes. And please understand nobody is realizing what is happening. Each one is patting himself on the back for a job well done. Who are the guys in charge of current liabilities? That is your purchase department. And they are patting themselves on the backs. Look what wonderful credit I am extracting from vendors. Who are the guys on the current asset side? That's your sales team. They are also taking credit for the fact, look, I'm selling on such short credit periods. And who is creating your long-term assets? That's your expansion team, your new projects. And if you're a large organization, you're always growing. And doesn't matter how large you are, every now and then your projects will come to a halt because you run out of money. <clears throat> And here you have more money than you need on the short term front. Do you think it's not going to be used? Before you realize which money has gone where, you have already utilized the short term money for long term purposes and then you come crashing down as, as I mentioned in the case of Subiksha. Folks, I am trying to tell you it is so important that you not only read but you make balance sheets very, very frequently. Monitor these ratios on a regular basis. Don't let it happen. And then you can ensure sustained growth. I'm sorry for the breakneck speed toward the end, but I was only trying to finish on the deadline. Thank you so much. Once again. It was really wonderful knowledge for all of the printers. We have, we have only two questions, quick questions. We have a mics here. Anybody want to ask the questions, please come forward and ask the question. No questions? Hmm? <laughs> Most welcome. <laughs> we already had a seminar in uh, three months ago, BMPA. That so was two, three days, two days. Two days two, seminar, two days, three two months days. ago, we had. <coughs> so we, are planning. we are planning again. Uh, one question is over. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, Can I ask a yes, please. Uh, okay. Were you here last year? No. Last year we covered the cost of capital portion of it. Uh, I don't fully agree with your first statement that long, long term is only for fixed assets. So that itself nullifies it. Cost of capital, I totally agree, is entire capital. My personal opinion is I'll even add current liabilities to it, if not only long term sources. And then irrespective of what you use it for, you have to see how much of the capital you've employed and what is the return you're generating. Why only look at it fixed assets? There are IT companies which come to India, don't have a single piece of fixed asset. They buy, take buildings on rent, they take furniture on rent, they take computers on rent. So why would you look at only the investment in fixed assets at long term? Not at all. Look at your entire capital investment. The formulas will tell you they don't include current liabilities. My personal opinion is that that also. Work out the entire cost of capital, look at the return that you're trying to generate and then work out the rows. <coughs> Thank you very much, friends. Uh, I'll uh, call upon Mr. Vishwanath Shetty to felicitate Mr. Dr. Lamba here.